Welcome to Options Brew TV, special edition with Mr. Steven Semararo. He's the data king of trade year, uh, the boy wonder, I'd say, right? <laughs> you uh, you do some pretty wacky things, I'd say, with numbers. Just to, yeah. Uh, I mean, let's call it what I it do is. I do wacky right? things. By the way, what, what, what is the, the, the wacky thing on the wall behind you? The wacky thing right here. Hold on. The camera, it's like flip. You know what I mean? This yeah. is a... A, uh, what is that? What is it called? <laughs> it's a fire it's alarm. A, it's a fire alarm, you know? Okay, all right. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought I it was I got to be safe, you know? I don't want to, like, die in a fire. Right, good, good point. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad it's behind your head. Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about um, the relationship of any individual stock, I think, to mm -hmm. the VIX. Is that going to be in terms mm -hmm. of the implied volatilities of each or something else? What, what, what would you... How would you just describe? looking at looking at uh, historical returns and how they compare uh, the okay. relationship of them. So yeah. the typical case is SPX and VIX. So SPX is the independent variable and VIX is the dependent variable. But you could really use any stock and see if it has some relationship to the VIX index. So what do you get? Like a what do they call it? An R squared value of sorts? Is that right? You get an R squared value. Yeah, that's that's how good of a fit your model is. Okay. If it's really high, you are probably overfit. But if you have something in like this 60-ish range, you should be right. good to go. So, okay, yeah. So R squared is always going to be positive. That's uh, right. So it's not square exactly. Value. You're right. It was 6.63. Because uh, you so, square a negative and it becomes a positive. Yes, but um, so the long running correlation between SPX and VIX is about 0. 0.8, uh, oh, negative okay. 0.8. Um, Got it. so there's a very strong inverse relationship between SPX and the yep. VIX index, okay? That's and what that's I'm why at. these types of models work, that's why they have predictive capability because of that strong relationship. Got it, okay? Slides up, and we'll just uh share them, okay? Yeah, there we Let's go. See that? Yeah, all right, okay, go to, go to town. So I the way we, by the way, sorry, I can't, uh, what is this code? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're going to show us how to code this as well. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Knock it out. Let's go. Okay. Where so go? the first thing you need to do is you need to sign up for Trady Air because you need API access. Mm -hmm. And so this is this part right here. Um, you're just going to enter your API key. You run this script on your computer. It's going to show you a prompt and you just type in your API key. That's okay. the first step. Mm -hmm. Then and, after and wait, that, how do you get it? How do you get the API key? You have to probably, you know, make, do some agreement of sorts of like a platform agreement, right? You need, so if you're an individual user, it yep. comes with the account. Um, oh. But if you're a developer, you need to get the developer account. Got yes. it. Okay. So yeah. as an individual, you open up a trade your brokerage account what you can do, mm -hmm. um, you and then you gain access to the APIs for your personal use. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. your personal awesome. use, yeah. And then so the next step is we need some type of data to actually feed into this regression model. So we're going to use two years of data. Mm -hmm. um, so that's this part here. So you import some libraries to get today's date in the year, month, day format, and then the date from two years ago. And then, so now uh, we have that here. Okay. And then, so the next thing is you have to call the Trader API and actually get the historical data. So that's what this is here. So we're gonna use some ticker. So we're using SPX. Okay. We take this line of code from the Trader API documentation. You could just copy it and it'll work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're just gonna print the length to make sure everything went okay. And then you do the same thing for the VIX index. Okay. Um, and you can see we have a length of 507. So we have 507 data points. Oh, is that data points or days or is it the same thing? Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Every day is going to be a new data point. Okay. And then, um, so we need to put this in an array so we could work with it because it comes in a dictionary format. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's what this is here. Um, but you okay. can see at the end of the screen, um, we start filling it into arrays. So we have SPX close and VIX close. And then, so we initialize two arrays of length, mm -hmm. um, 507, okay. and then we loop through it and we grab, uh, the close of each one. So you see SPX history mm -hmm. day sub I close and that I 
is your iteration variable. So it's going to go from zero to 506 and it's going to grab all the close prices. So now on the next page, because you want to, you know, make sure, you know, what you pulled is correct. You want to look at it, make sure everything's good. And so we can see SPX over the past two years. That's definitely SPX for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is VIX. So it looks good. Let's move on. So mm -hmm. the next thing we need to do is we need to compute the log returns, which is kind of like the percent change, mm -hmm. uh, but they're not exactly the same thing. But so we need to compare the returns. So this is what we do here. Um, so again, we initialize two more rays, but of 507 minus one, because we have this I plus one there. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll end up going past the bounds and then you get your percent return. So now we could see this here. So these are the rolling percent returns of SP, SPX and VIX. And this, this large part um, in the beginning of SPX, that's the COVID crash. So there's a lot of volatility. So that's the and, that's the first grass graph up in the top left there, the big, huge spikes on the left side of that graph. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then what's the second graph next to that? Those are the percent changes in VIX. Okay. And now uh, we're going to plot it together. So on the x-axis is the percent change, the log return of SPX on some day. Mm -hmm. And then it's the VIX return on the y-axis of the exact same day. And okay. now we're all set. We could put this into the Python model, into the NumPy model, and Wait, it will spit out our what is regression. That? Does everyone know what that is besides me? So NumPy is a Python library. It's free to install. It's easy to use. It's user-friendly. Okay. And it's used to do linear algebra, which is what polynomial regression is. So if you're going to actually code this by hand, it's horrible and you're not going to want to do it and you're going to hate yourself. But <laughs> if you use the library that's already built by someone smarter than you, then mm -hmm. the world is a lot better that way. So wait, where do you get this? Do you get this <laughs> off the do you get this off the Google machine? Do you go to the Google machine? <laughs> yeah, the Google library? machine. That's right. Okay, and you yeah. copy it from the Google machine and then it's it's all legal and you know, the Google machine mm -hmm. doesn't care that you mm -hmm. copy the Python library. Yeah, so okay. you're not copying it, you're importing it. Understood. Yes. So okay. the first thing we're going to do is, so we're going to do three regressions and compare how they look. So the first one is linear regression. So this mm -hmm. assumes that the relationship between SPX and VIX or any stock and VIX is constant. So mm -hmm. if you believe that the relationship is constant, you would want to use linear regression. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. And so it's this it's this negative slope line. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's negatively sloped because they're inversely correlated. Got it. Um, so it has a negative slope. It kind of varies between this. You know, um, near the negative five on the X axis, mm -hmm. uh, there's more there's more error there. You can see all those blue dots up at the top. Yep. So this doesn't you know, this might not always fit very well, but it fits well for the data, you know, Mm -hmm. near the smaller returns, near the zero. Yeah. So then do very well when VIX move, when SPX is down a lot, because there's a lot of error. This is not going to have much predictive capability. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's ways around that, of course. So if you, if you just increase the degrees of the regression and you use a quadratic regression, mm -hmm. a degree two polynomial, mm -hmm. and so the quadratic kind of gets like uh it, it kind of curves, you know what I mean? So you can mm -hmm. see a slight curve towards the outlier moves. Yep. And so this is going to get a better fit. So basically what this is saying is as SPX, let's say the return is at, you can see the returns from uh, plus 5% to plus 10%. It, you know, it curves a little bit more than the, than the linear regression. So this would be saying that um, the VIX would actually not move down as much, mm -hmm. which makes intuitive sense because even though that stocks are going up quite a lot, they're still making a volatile move. Mm -hmm. So although that it's going to compress volatility because stocks are going up, it shouldn't get compressed as much as smaller moves because you're making a volatile move. Mm -hmm. okay? even, though so, the, even though it's to the upside. Yes. Okay. So if, for example, um, I remember this, this was probably two years ago, SoftBank, mm -hmm. um, 
they decide to gamble like a degenerate and they bought billions of out of the money calls on SPX and they shot up the VIX by like 10 points. Okay. So, you know, upside can bring the VIX up. It's not just, it's not just the puts. So like right. everyone, everyone thinks like, you know, Oh, downside is going right. to bring the, bring the VIX up, but it, it's not the, it's not always the case. Right. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the quadratic, and then we could do a cubic too. Do you have an example of that? Yeah. No. So this is the Never cubic. Mind. So this this is a degree. Okay. Uh, three polynomial, and so this has a really good fit. So it has that same thing, you know. Towards it, it what it does is it conforms to the tails better. Mm -hmm. And if you think about this, this should make intuitive sense because the relationship between SPX and VIX is not going to be linear. And in fact, mm -hmm. you know, when you have these tail environments, yep. things get very wacky, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why that's why these would work. But now you may be asking like, well, let's do like a 150 degree polynomial, right? Let's yep. just, let's do 3000, right? Mm -hmm. That will be overfit for sure. Um, so you can't just, constantly just tack on uh more degrees and say oh this is better right because overfitting is an issue if you overfit then there's not predictive capability it means you it means it works for the data set but it's not going to work in the real world so wait so, when you say overfit you're 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 making the relationship fit not letting the data do its stuff yeah you're kind of you're kind of like forcing it um to fit to only that specific data set that you have, it won't fit for future returns, oh, I so to speak. It. Yeah, it like um, it's not like when I try to stuff myself into my old suit, right? When I try to fit myself in there, it, and it doesn't really fit, but I'm just saying it does fit this one time because I got fatter. Um, is it like that? <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. I don't know how. I don't know how that works with data. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, mean, you I think my answer like, to that is yes. Who the hell yes. wears a suit anymore is what you're thinking. All right. Back to the data. Go ahead. So, oh, so now you could look at how these compare. Yeah. So the correlation over the past two years between SPX and VIX is negative uh, 0.70. So a good correlation, a strong inverse correlation. So... If you're going to do a regression, mm -hmm. this this will have predictive capability. And okay. now the correlation squared, that's your R squared for the linear model only. Because correlation is a measure uh, of the residuals only for linear regression. Okay. Um, and that's why you see the correlation squared and the linear model both have an R squared of 0.48, which isn't that good, actually. This isn't going to give you edge. It's, it's, it's not higher mm -hmm. than 0.50 right um, sure but so now you could see if you use the quadratic and then the cubic yeah. the quadratic gets it increases it's, it's better and then the cubic is 55 now you have a good edge sure so this 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 should play out better than a linear model okay Got um, and then if you do um, you know, a quarter, um, a fourth degree polynomial or, or fifth or sixth or seventh, that R squared is going to approach one. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's better. It could mean it's overfit. So there's always a trade-off between two, like um, you can't have the best of both worlds in life. You know, mm -hmm. there's always a trade-off. Right. Um, so that's the trade-off. Got yeah. it. Okay. Understood. And so now how do people use this in the real world? I mean, is, is there a real world application here? What, what, how, what's my trade? So of course there's a real world application. So if you, if you say, so basically you would, you would have, you would look at this linear model and then yeah. let's say SPX shot down big okay. time one day. Let's just, let's just say, you know, something horrible happened. Stock market's down 10%, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, VIX shoots up like, let's say 300%. Okay. These numbers don't have to be, you know, realistic, but this sure. is just for the sake of example. And then you would, you would look at what happened on that day, SPX down 10%, VIX up 300%. And then mm -hmm. you're going to say, Hey, there's a huge difference between what the cubic model predicts and what mm -hmm. actually happened. So, and then in that case, you would say, we might be oversold here. Right. SPX should be probably higher mm -hmm. and VIX should probably be lower.
Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Okay. And can you do this analysis with individual stocks besides X SPX? Is, is that mm -hmm. valid as well? Depending on so, how well they relate, right? Yeah. So we're going to post the code in the description of the video. So anyone can download this file and okay. then you could enter whatever ticker you want, play with it. Okay. And make informed trading decisions based on it. Okay, good. I like yeah. it. So we're, we're posting this code. Yes. I love it. Okay, Steven. The coding community will really appreciate this too. Um, but if you can copy paste, you don't have to be a coder necessarily, right? You can just kind of. No, you could, you could be an idiot just like <laughs> me, just like Lex, you know? Like me, right. <laughs> <laughs> just know how to understand what you're reading. That's it, right? Yes. You, as long, you know, if you understand the black box, that's that's good enough. You know, that's right? Um, I, I agree. You know, even even the NumPy library can be a black box if you don't know linear algebra. But that doesn't mean you can't use NumPy. You know, you don't sure. know how your cell phone works. You know, I don't no. know how my cell phone works. You know, but I could still use it. Sure. You know. Right. Yeah. Good point. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Well, that was excellent. We'll do some more of these. Huh? Let's uh, let's get mm -hmm. some more. I'm going to call them bots. I know they're not, but we're going to play the bot game. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Let's go. Yep. All right.